Well, hello, welcome back for another lesson. I thought that maybe it would be beneficial to look at application questions regarding endothermic and exothermic reactions. So I know sometimes students ask for practical examples, so this is what it's going to be about. Before we look at practice questions, a very quick recap. So we have endothermic and exothermic uh, reactions. Now, we normally look at a system. The system is either the substance that's being uh, looked at or the reaction. Now, it's very difficult to put a thermometer inside a system. It's not always possible. So what we do instead, we measure the temperature of the surroundings, of the environment around the system. So by picking up a change of temperature, we can then determine by analyzing backwards in a sense what the system did. So as an example, if the surroundings are getting warmer, well then that means the system had to release energy into the surroundings. So this would be an example of an exothermic reaction. Now if the surroundings get colder, well where did the energy go? It had to go into the system, making the system or the reaction endothermic. If we look at changes of state from solid to liquid to gas, if a substance is going in this direction, from solid to liquid to gas, the particles or the substance is getting warmer. So automatically, in order to get warmer, the substance had to absorb energy. So that would be the endothermic pathway. And if uh, a gas becomes a liquid and then becomes a solid, well, the substance has to release energy into the environment in order to cool off, in order to turn into a liquid or into a solid. So if the energy is going down within uh, the substance, automatically it had to release energy, so it's exothermic, okay? So that's the little review. Now, if we look at practical examples, we have a toaster with toasted bread. So if we toast bread, what is the bread doing? Well, obviously it's toasting, but in order to get toasted, does it need to absorb or release energy? Well, obviously it needs to absorb energy. So this would be endothermic because the bread absorbed energy in order to toast. Here we have clothes that are drying. The clothes were wet, so we're looking at the water inside the clothes. So the water was liquid and it evaporated and in, during the process turned into a gas. So we just said that if the substance becomes warmer, right, it's going from liquid to gas, how does it become warmer? Well, to become warmer, the water had to absorb energy in order to turn into a gas. So if it absorbed energy, again, we have an endothermic situation. Next, we have a fireplace with a fire inside. No, this is not my home, although I could live in that place. It's well decorated, I actually like it, but it's not my house. So back to the example, this is a fire, fireplace with a fire inside. Now we know that when we sit by the fire, you know, like I'm sitting here and I'm all happy. I've got longer hair and of course my hair is not red, but you get the idea. So I'm sitting by the fire. What am I feeling? I'm feeling the heat from the fire. So what is the fire, this reaction, what is it doing? Is it absorbing or is it releasing energy? Well, clearly it's releasing energy. So if it's releasing energy, it's exothermic, all right? And here we have an instant cold pack. So if you have an injury, for example, you're gonna get the cold pack, you're gonna put that on your injury, let's say on your leg. How does your leg feel? It feels cold, right? Now, if it feels cold, did the energy go from the cold pack to your leg or from the leg to the cold pack? So we're, this is our system. We're analyzing the cold pack here, not your leg. So is the cold pack absorbing energy or releasing energy? Well, the fact that your leg feels cold, that means it, it gave away energy to the cold pack. So the energy from your leg went into the cold pack, all right? And it left your leg colder. 
So that means this is endo. All right. Sometimes it's a little bit confusing because you're gonna say, well, my leg lost energy. Yeah, but we're not looking at your leg per se. We're looking at the cold pack. What is the cold pack doing? It's absorbing energy from your leg. So your leg is the environment. The cold pack is the system. Remember when we looked at the previous slide here? So your leg would be the environment. That would be your leg. And the cold pack would be the system. The system is absorbing energy from your leg. So it's endothermic. It's entering the cold pack, making it endothermic. Okay. So that's the first exercise. Next exercise. We have a column for exothermic, a column for, uh, sorry, a column for endothermic and a column for exothermic. What I want to do here is actually drag these items around and put them in the correct column. Okay. So endothermic is energy released or energy absorbed. If you said absorbed, you are correct. So energy absorbed would go here and energy released would go here. Now I should have said that before, but maybe what you want to do is pause the video from time to time, figure out what goes where, and then listen to the rest of the video to see if you got it right. But I'm just going to continue. So next, we have here an equation with the energy on the product side. What did we say about that? Did we say that it represents an endothermic reaction or an exothermic reaction? Well, if the energy is on the product side, it's as if it's exiting. So that means exiting, exo, it goes over here. Okay, so that's an example of an exothermic reaction. Here we have a reaction and we have the enthalpy expressed outside of the reaction, but it doesn't have a negative sign. So if it doesn't have a negative sign, then automatically it has to be positive. And yes, we don't always put the positive sign. It's implied that it's positive. Now, does this mean that it's an endothermic reaction or exothermic reaction? It is, yes, you are correct if you said endothermic. So this would go here. Now let's make some room on this side. If the energy, actually, let me just move this over. We're going to do this after. Let's do this in a, an orderly fashion. Okay, let's continue here. I have an equation here. The energy is on the um, reactant side. So if the energy is on the reactant side, did we say this was endo or exo? We said the energy is entering the reaction, so it's being absorbed by the reactants, or overall the energy is positive, so this would be an endothermic reaction. And I kind of misspoke here because I said the energy is entering, you know, being absorbed by the reactants. It's true, but it's only a half truth. Don't forget, the reactants are absorbing energy in order to break the bonds. And then there's also energy released when the new bonds for the new substances are formed. And it's a difference between the two uh, processes, the two steps that gives us a net energy. And in this case, it happens to be positive. So we put it on the reactant side. But never forget that really there are always two steps, energy absorbed by the bonds that are broken and energy released by the new bonds formed. Okay. And as you can see over here, actually, we're going to address that in a moment. Okay, let's take a look at this one over here. So this one has a negative enthalpy of reaction. If the energy is negative, we said this represents an exothermic reaction. Oops. So we're going to put it here. And actually, let me do this so that way we're comparing apples with apples, right? So Delta H, Delta H, energy within the, rea the reaction, energy within the reaction equation. Okay, let's do the graphs and then we'll do these after. Now, if the reactants have a certain energy and the energy goes down and then we have the products. So there's a loss of energy overall during the process. Is that endo or is that exo? If you said exothermic, you are again correct. So this would be an example of an exothermic graph, automatically making this one endothermic, right? So our reactants have less energy, they gain energy 
they become the products. The products have more energy than the original substances. There's a net gain of energy. So it was endothermic. And then we have these expressions about the bonds broken and the bonds formed. So what we're looking at is this over here, bonds broken. So that's the energy absorbed by the bonds broken, energy uh, released by the bonds formed. So in this case, the amount of energy absorbed is greater than the amount of energy released. So which statement here expresses that? Amount of energy absorbs absorbed by the bonds broken is greater than the energy released by the bonds formed. So automatically this one will go here, but let's analyze. The energy absorbed by the bonds broken is smaller than the energy released by the bonds formed. And that's what it says here. Bonds broken, energy from the bonds broken is smaller than the energy from the bonds formed. So here you have basically a summary of the different forms that, or different expressions that we might use to express something that is endothermic or exothermic. So if you understood all of this, you basically know all the basics and even a little bit more of, or I should say the ins and outs of, the, of endothermic and exothermic reactions. And last point, you saw here it says Rx, that is a shortened way of saying reactions, but you got that already, I'm assuming. So that's it for the practice. I'll see you around for your next lesson. And in the meantime, take care.